What's up? I'm Adam Badger. Thank you for watching this video. If you do get any value out of this, which I know you will, just please be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment, share it with a friend, anything you can do to get this information out there. I believe it's genuinely very valuable and helpful to people who are trying to lose weight. So today we're going to be talking about three by three, easy to follow fat loss nutrition plan. This is something that I start clients on, or maybe someone who has never tracked before and they're just looking for an easier place to start. This is where I start them. And it's very customizable towards your individual preferences and lifestyle. It's just about actually applying the information that we're gonna go over using this template. So three by three means you're gonna do three things at each meal, three times per day. So this is based around a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner. I feel that the biggest problem people have when it comes to weight loss is that they don't eat enough nutrient-dense foods to feel full throughout the day. It leads to grazing, snacking, and over-consuming calories uh, throughout the day. Or at night, after the workday is over and you're kind of relaxing, people then tend to overindulge or they have really high sugar cravings. So if any of that resonates with you, definitely give this a shot. It's going to help you out a lot. So at each meal, you're going to have these three things present on your plate is you're going to pick out a protein. I'm sure you saw that coming. Two most important things are going to be your total calorie intake and your protein intake. Your protein intake is going to keep you full throughout the day. It's going to guide better food decisions throughout the day. It's going to help you build a more balanced meal. Uh, this whole structure is based around getting you enough protein through the day so that you're supporting lean muscle, you're controlling your appetite, you're controlling your sugar cravings and your hunger cues throughout the day. And it's going to allow you to stick to your diet easier. It's going to make it easier to adhere to. Find a hand sized portion of a lean protein source. And that is going to be the star of your meal. That's going to be the main thing that you focus on on your plate at every single meal. So I say a hand size, I'm sure you've seen palm size before and your palm is always going to be smaller than your whole hand. I want us to get as much protein in as possible to be as full as possible. So I say go with a hand size. So even if you've got a really tiny hand, you're still getting more than you would if you went by your palm. Uh, so about a hand size portion of a lean protein source. Step number two, you're gonna pick your produce. It's gonna be a fruit or vegetable. If you're preparing a stir fried vegetable, I probably wouldn't use three tablespoons of butter or a half a cup of oil to prepare it in. I would use cooking spray or just a drizzle of olive oil or something like that. Uh, but any vegetable or fruit, uh, don't be afraid to eat fruit. It's very filling. It has a lot of nutritional value. It will not make you fat because of sugar. Um, fruit is a very, very good part of a part of a whole balanced meal, but it's also a staple in my diet, whether I'm trying to get lean or put on muscle. Fruit is awesome. So fruit or vegetable on that plate. So your protein first, hand size portion. With your produce, I would try to get equal or bigger serving size of produce to protein. The reason why is because with your produce source, it's very uh, low calorie, very nutrient dense. So for vegetables, for fruit, you can eat a lot of it for a very small amount of calories. So let's say for protein source, let's say you have a, a four ounce steak, try to get like two cups of veggies on that plate and watch how much more, watch how more satiating the meal is when you have all that protein or all that produce. Uh, step number three is going to be a starchy carb. I emphasize starchy because again, we're trying to get more voluminous nutrient dense food in our life. So a starchy carb is going to be something that is fibrous that takes up room on the plate. And for this one, I would go with about a cup of a cooked version of this. So if we're talking about rice, it would be a cup of cooked rice. If you're talking about a potato, it'd be a cup of it, cooked potato, a cup of cooked oatmeal. And you can look up conversions like what is an un, what does an uncooked version of something get you uh, when it's cooked. So like rice, pasta, oatmeal, it's generally like a, I, I think it's kind of close to like a three to one ratio. Uh, so sometimes even a four to one. So like a quarter cup of uncooked rice might yield a cup of cooked rice. So what you're doing here is you're measuring by the cooked version. The reason why I do that is because most people, when they're cooking for their families, they're not going to sit there and cook their rice, their pasta separately from their family's meal. So cook it and then get a cooked serving size about a cup of a starchy carb. So we're gonna go through what foods fit into each of these categories. 
First up, proteins. So again, you're choosing a lean protein source, about a hand sized portion to fit on your plate at every single meal. What do I eat to get protein? Almost everything is on this list. There's actually even more options than this, but this is a ton of options that'll fit on the screen while I'm holding this whiteboard. <laughs> eggs and egg whites. With eggs and egg whites, I like to do a mixture of both. So a couple of whole eggs mixed with a few egg whites. Or if you want to save some calories, you can just do a cup of egg whites. There's nothing wrong with eating the yolks. But if, when you do a cup of egg whites, obviously it saves you a little bit of calories. But yolks are totally healthy for you. So a mixture of eggs and egg whites, generally going more egg whites to whole eggs to get the protein up but to reduce the total number of calories greek yogurt or whey protein these are all really good kind of like breakfast snack options uh but then we got like shrimp chicken breast or thighs turkey breast 90 to 93 percent beef tuna scallops tilapia cod salmon flank steak tri-tip steak sirloin steak pork tenderloin bison 94 to 99 percent ground turkey and there's a ton of other different meats that'll fall into these categories these are just some very lean protein sources right off the bat to get you started if you want to be fancy with it you can eat things like lobster or crab that's totally fine too if you like venison that's a great source of protein as well there's a lot of different sources out there even different cuts of lamb are great but these are some basic ones that you can find at pretty much any grocery store the reason why i specify on this like 94 to 99% ground turkey, 90 to 93% uh, ground beef. When most people are shopping for those things, they're not paying attention to this. Most people just assume if it's ground turkey that it's automatically healthier than ground beef. When in fact, ground beef is very, very healthy for you. And if you're getting like 85% ground turkey, it's got just as much fat as, you know, ground beef does. So when you're choosing your meats, be sure to look for a higher protein uh, to fat ratio. So you want the protein count to be way higher than the fat count. If you get something like 80% beef, it's actually got more fat than protein. So for one serving of that, you're getting like almost double the amount of calories as you would from like a 93% amount of beef, way more fat and way less protein. So when you're looking at a portion of like 80% beef versus 90% beef, it looks exactly the same. So to the average consumer, they're going to think, well, it's the same calories. It's the same thing. They look exactly the same on the plate. It's exactly the same in the packaging. Same thing with like 94% ground turkey versus 85% ground turkey. There's a literally no difference on the plate or in the packaging. But one has way more calories and fat than the other. So pay attention to the protein to fat ratio. You want the protein way higher than the fat. And all of these options are going to get you at at least 30 grams of protein per hand size portion. So start your plate with one of these for three meals a day. Next up, we've got produce. So after you pick your lean protein source, you're gonna add a produce to the plate. So many options to choose from and none are drastically better or worse than the other. So this is one that I definitely wouldn't overthink. When you're choosing your protein, it's good to pay attention because there's a lot of foods that are just marketed as high protein foods that are just not. When you see things like protein peanut butter or protein pancakes or protein chips or things like different sausages, like those are technically foods that have protein in them, but it's very deceiving if you don't know what to look for, if you don't know how much protein you're looking for in each serving. So again, you don't have to meticulously track this stuff, but when you're choosing your protein source, it's very important to be aware of the nutrition facts and look at the protein to fat ratio and look at how much protein you're getting per serving versus the total calories. The thing about produce is there's so many options to choose from, it's almost impossible to not be able to find something that you like. So I listed, a, I have a very short list here because there's just too many to write down. So when you're talking about produce, you can talk about green veggies, things like green beans, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, asparagus. But again, there's a ton of options under that. These are just some that I eat pretty regularly in my diet. You can even go with something like a salad. A salad is just a mixture of different vegetables. You can be pretty liberal with the dress things that you pick as long as you're not like you know using half a friggin bottle of dressing on your salad you're probably going to be good so when you're choosing a dressing for a salad yeah you can pay attention to the calories but at the end of the day the difference between 100 calories per serving and 50 calories per serving is not going to cause you to gain unwanted weight so we don't want to overthink something like that but salads are great just watch the add-ins watch the dressing any type of green vegetable uh for fruit you know 
I'm sure you guys know what fruits are, right? Apples, bananas, berries, pineapple, kiwis, watermelons, grapes, oranges. Like there's a ridiculous number of fruits to choose from. And again, none are drastically better or worse. Get, if you're doing something like a banana or an apple, right? Have one of them. If you're doing something like berries or pineapple or kiwi or watermelon, have about two cups of it. Uh, you know, of a diced version of that fruit on your plate. Don't overthink this stuff, guys. If you have a good serving of produce on your plate, you're going to be more full. The meal is going to be more nutritionally balanced and you're going to have better hunger cues and, you know, blood sugar levels throughout the day. So step number two would be to pick from the list, the endless list of vegetables and fruits that are going to taste good, that you like, that you, you like the way you prepare them and add them to your meal to complete your plate. Third part of the three by three plan, the starchy carb. Now, this is the one that kind of tends to freak most people out, right? Because we've been told for so long that you shouldn't eat carbs. If you're trying to lose weight, you got to watch your carbs, you got to stay away from carbs. So I've literally had people that I've coached when I first started coaching them think that they can't eat a potato. They're afraid to eat a bowl of oatmeal. They're afraid to eat fruit. They've been told and just brainwashed to think that carbs are going to make them gain fat. But starchy carbs are a great addition to your, to your meals. Just throughout the day, if you're getting enough quality carbs in your diet, you're going to tend to have less sugar cravings throughout the day. When you're drastically depleting your carbs, that's when you tend to notice you're getting those high sugar cravings and it's those cookies or the candy in your pantry have more temptation surrounding them when you're having those sugar cravings. So by eating enough carbs throughout the day, you're going to reduce those cravings. You're also going to feel more full. You're going to have more energy. Starchy carb options. Two of my favorites are potatoes and rice. There's just a ton of different ways that you can prepare them to make them taste pretty good. And they go with almost any of the protein options that I gave you. So for potatoes, you can do like mashed potatoes, obviously not loading it up with cream, butter, uh, and, and stuff like that, but some sort of mashed potato, a baked potato, diced potatoes in the air fryer, slice them up into fries and air fry them or bake them in the oven. So there's a lot of options there. You can make like breakfast potatoes or breakfast hash browns. Again, just obviously not like frying them. Rice, super easy. I can make a pot of rice in 30 minutes. That's going to last me for the entire week. Very, very convenient carb source. And another one is pasta. Pasta gets kind of a bad rap, but you have to think about it. The reason why pasta gets a bad rap is because it's generally associated with very high calorie, highly palatable meals. If you're eating pasta covered in a creamy sauce in an overly large bowl with no protein and you're dipping bread in it, like, yeah, it's not the carbs that are bad. It's the fact that you're eating a shit ton of calories and it's very, you know, sat it's very uh, palatable. So it's easy to overeat on. But pasta on its own is completely fine. A serving of pasta has about the same amount of carbs and calories as a serving of rice or a serving of potatoes. It's not that much different. What gets pasta the bad rap is all the add-ins. So if you enjoy pasta, having a serving of cooked pasta with some red sauce on it, which is also relatively low calorie, is going to give you the taste profile of like some of your favorite dishes, but without all the added calories. So if you make just a regular plain old pasta, but you have one serving of it with red sauce and you pair it with a lean protein and a produce, you're going to get the taste profile of a pasta dish, but you're more filling, more nutritional value and way lower calories. So again, this is where we kind of think outside the box and we don't just call a food bad. We look at the behavior surrounding that food. Uh, Oatmeal, grits, cream of rice, those are great breakfast additions to have on the side with your eggs or a protein shake or Greek yogurt. Uh, sourdough bread, I mean, don't overthink this stuff, guys. And bread across the board pretty much has the same calories per two slices. Yes, if you're going and getting a foot long sub and you have 98 grams of carbs, which is equivalent to like 400 calories of bread probably not the best decision. But again, it's not the carbs that get you. It's the calories associated with that meal. But having a couple of slices of toast with your breakfast or having a sandwich for lunch, putting five ounces of turkey on a sandwich for lunch is totally fine. You can lose weight doing that. Sourdough bread, I write sourdough specifically because for me, I like the taste of it. Um, I find that from even with sourdough just naturally is gluten free too gluten is not bad but for some people who have gluten intolerances it's easier to digest but i just like sourdough bread and generally when you buy good quality sourdough bread from a bakery or from a farmer's market you're just getting better quality ingredients than just buying like a wonder bread off the shelf but don't overthink that any two slices of bread can pretty much fit into that category quinoa is another one that a lot of people like to eat 
But as you get used to the stuff, you get consistent with it. You can be very, very flexible with your approach. But for now, when you're just starting out, start with one of these, add about a cup of a cooked serving of this to your meal along with your protein and your produce. Again, don't even overthink this stuff. All right, if you stayed through the whole video and you got value out of it, but you're like, Adam, I don't remember everything you said, I have a downloadable PDF in the description of this video, totally free. It just breaks down everything that I talked about and lists out the specific foods that I talked about on here with pictures and serving sizes on there. So if you got value out of this, but you don't quite remember everything that we talked about, download the PDF in the description of this video. And if you have any questions, just drop it in the comments. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe.